welcome back. As a matter of fact. And boom. That's right. Today's a shorter read, which is okay. Let's not waste time and dawdle about it. Let's get straight into it. Selena was relieved that no one was making her feel stupid for blurting out. Sorry, whew, just got done with a run. Selena was relieved that no one was making her feel stupid for blurting out two word answers to a six word clue. Ron stood and began acting out a clue for his team. They played three rounds of charades. Hugh was a walking trivia encyclopedia, so he easily guessed whatever his teammates acted out. After the first round, Selena kept her mouth shut to avoid further embarrassment, but her team soundly beat Ron's team which included Teresa, Cade, and Ava's husband, Marshall. Finally, Ron threw up his hands. I give up. We need to play something else. He picked up his plastic mug and looked into it. Selena stood. Would you like another cream soda? Ron glanced at the big ice-filled bowl and led to the canned drinks. I think I drank them all. Selena laughed. We have more out in the fridge in the garage. I'll get you some. You sure? Ron asked. I could drink something else. I don't want to be a bother. No bother, Selena assured him. Ava tapped Marshall. Why don't you go get your guitar from the guitar, sweetie? From the car, sweetie. We can play Name That Tune. Hugh groaned. Ava winked at Selena. Music is the dark hole of Hugh's trivia verse. Selena grinned. I'm pretty good at coming up with song titles. Hurry back then, Ava said. We'll keep the same teams. Maybe you can carry Hugh. I'm hurrying, Selena said, chuckling. What a fun night, she thought. It was headed around the house of the garage. She really got glad she suggested it. Selena hadn't had much one-on-one -on -one time with Kay during the evening, but she'd been watching him. He'd been at ease, laughing and talking easily. He seemed like his old self. What a relief. Pushing open the back door of the garage, Selena flipped on the light. They run out of bulbs with the right wattage, and they'd have to substitute wimpy 60-watt bulbs in the overhead lights. The bulbs didn't throw enough light to brighten the whole garage. Much of the space sat in pockets of dingy darkness. Selena went past the SUV in the new small red pickup. They'd driven it home in the previous week. She strode toward the extra fridge tucked against the wall. The fridge was flanked by several stacks of boxes Cade hadn't had time to unpack yet. His workshop space was still riding, waiting to be set up. Next to the boxes, the lawnmower, weed whacker, blower, bl Bush trimmer, hoses, and a few other yard maintenance odds and ends were in the tangle that Cade promised he'd sort out soon. Next to his jumble, a shop vac sat on top of the metal workbench that Cade hadn't yet put into place. As Selena reached for the fridge, her gaze skimmed over the shop vac. She started to open the fridge door. Her hand froze. She flicked her gaze back toward the shop vac. Selena's heart catapulted through her throat. She gasped. Next to the shop vac, a small white robot with black eyes stood upright. It was Lally. It had to be. It looked you, it looked just like the robot in the photos. The robot didn't move, but it was uh, facing Selena. She felt like it w was watching her. For several seconds, Selena was frozen. While her heartbeat galloped and invisible mites crawled along her arms, she stared at Lally in shock. When Lally remained motionless, Selena whipped open the fridge, grabbed a six-pack of cream soda, letting the fridge door slam. She looked toward the shop back again, and seconds took her to open and close the fridge and, lay, and look away again. She debated whether she wished the robot would be gone or still be there, which would be worse. The robot was still there. Selena turned and raced back through the garage, slamming the door behind her. She ran around the house, showing, slowing her pace only when within a few of her guests. Knackbeard... Back near the gas fire pit, she hand a can of soda to Hugh and put the rest of the sodas in a bowl of ice. She casually walked over to Cade. Marshall was tuning up his guitar. Everyone else was chatting. Cade was having a conversation with Ava about some coding issue that they were facing in the project they were working on together. Selena stepped, back, stepped up beside Cade and put a hand on his arm. He couldn't miss the fact that her hand was trembling. She looked at Ava. Sorry to interrupt, but I need to steal him for a moment. Cade raised an eyebrow in question. I uh, need you in the garage for a minute, honey, Selena told him. Everything okay, Cade asked. Uh, yeah, just she gave Ava a tight smile. Sorry, I'll bring him right back. Ava smiled. No problem. She turned toward her husband. What is it, Cade asked as Selena grabbed his hand and pulled him toward the garage. 
She was trotting. She stumbled over a tree root. Then he, too, started jogging, picking up on her urgency. Selena hesitated at the garage door. Are you going to tell me what's going on? Kate asked. Selena didn't answer him. She took a deep breath and opened the door. The garage lights were still on. She left them on purposely. She didn't want to turn them off before she was out of the garage. Not that, that thing in there. And the fact that it wasn't moving when she left had done very little to lower her panic level. Selena stepped into the garage and pointed toward the shop back. Look, he, she said. After she spoke, she got up and courage to do the same as she was asking Kate to do. What am I looking at? Kate asked. Selena blinked on an empty spot in the workbench next to the shop back. The robot was gone. It was there, she said. What was there? Kate asked. Did a raccoon get in here? I shooed one away last week. Selena shook her head. She quickly scanned the garage. The robot wasn't in sight, but that didn't mean anything. The garage had way too many places to hide. Selena groaned. Now she was getting paranoid as Cade was. Cade stepped in front of Selena. I ask you again, what's going on? Selena looked at him and she swallowed. I, I saw, I saw Lally. I mean, I think it was Lally. It was a white robot that looked exactly like the one in the picture. And where did you see him? Cade interrupted. Selena pointed next to the shop back. Cade strode across the garage. He looked all around the workbench and behind the boxes on either side of the fridge. When he turned and began searching the rest of the garage, Selena stood near the door, poised for reasons that had no foundation in logic, to run. In her mind was a tangle of incoherent thoughts, a thunny white noise like sound buzzed in her ears. What was going on here? Kate returned to Selena, a furrow brunch of her skin between his brows. I didn't imagine it, Selena said. I didn't say you did, Kate said. But Selena began... Kate took her hand. She didn't resist when he pulled her out of the garage and closed the door behind him. He, too, left the lights on. We have guests, Kate said. They're going to be wondering what we're doing. Selena nodded. He was right. Now wasn't the time to talk at what she'd seen. It wasn't time to think about it, either. They ran to the corner of the house. Then Selena pasted on her happy host's smile. Sorry about that, he called out. A little rodent issue, Kate lied. Kate lied. Selena knows how natural the lie sounded, but she didn't take the time to think about that either. The day after the dinner party, Cade was gone when Selena woke up. She found a note on his pillow. The note she knew immediately contained another lie. Sorry, got called into work. Love you. Cade never got called into work on a Saturday. He was merely avoiding her. He didn't want to talk about what had happened. Well, neither did she. She wanted to forget about it. Selena got up and looked outside. The day was bright, but she didn't feel like taking a walk. What did she feel like doing? The truth was that what, however much she wanted to go forget what had happened, Selena was rattled by it. Really, really rattled. Selena got up and pulled on the dark blue terry cloth robe and then down the hall. What she needed was a long, hot bath. But Selena shuffled toward the bathroom. She thought about the master suite they intended to have. They had planned to knock on the wall and steal some space from the guest bedroom that they could create an entire suite bathroom for the master bedroom. They just discussed a couple days before to get together, whether to tackle that or the kitchen next. She was thinking of the entire and suite should come first. Selena went to the bathroom. She left the bathroom door open. She always left the bathroom door open when she took a bath, even when Cade was home. She didn't like steaming up the room. Turning on the tap at the end of the clawfoot tub under the window, Selena ran the water until it got hot. She adjusted the temperature, put it in the drain plug, and poured some muscle-relaxing bath salts into the water. The bath salts were a combination of Epsom salts and agrarium and juniper essential oils. Selena inhaled the scent of the oils and let them try to soothe her. They failed miserably, but she hoped the bath itself would do the trick. Because the farmhouse sat in the front of their five acres, of a the acreage was thick with apple trees around the back of the house. Selena never worried about pulling to the shade over the window above the tub. Their property was secluded and private. No one was around. Selena waited until the tub was half full, then she dropped her robe and started to pull off her nightshirt. When it was almost over her head, she froze. She yanked the nightshirt back down. Someone was watching her. She was sure of it. Selena leaned toward the window and scanned the backyard. She squinted looked toward the trees. Her gaze shot from one tree to the next. She didn't see anyone. Selena frowned, even more rattled now than she had been before. She reached out and pulled a shade. Then she turned and closed the bathroom door. Selena's bath wasn't as relaxing as she hoped it would be. In fact, it was almost torturous. She tried several times to lean back and close her eyes, but she did too much on the alert. She kept thinking she would hear sounds coming from another part of the house. Once she was sure, she heard a creak in the attic overhead. Twice she thought she heard footsteps on the stairs. Finally, after just 15 minutes, Selena gave up. She got out of the tub, drained it, and quickly grew her robe on. Hurrying back to the bedroom, she dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. Then she went through the entire house, making sure she was alone. Selena checked every room and every closet. She even looked inside the awful trunk, which was now back in the rear closet of the third bedroom which was still empty. 
After she reassured herself that she was alone, Selena tried to work. It didn't do any good. She couldn't focus. She kept hearing sounds in the house. Once, when the refrigerator compressors kicked on, she practically leaped out of her chair. Work wasn't working. She not she was an out of nerves. Selena abandoned her office. She grabbed her purse, went out on a pickup, drove out of town. She spent the afternoon antiquing, coming home with a vintage skirt, an antique hall table, and a pair of a hundred year old pewter candle holder. She tried to tell herself she imagined everything that happened the night before it and that morning. Over the next two weeks, though, it became abundantly clear that Selena hadn't imagined anything. She really had been watched. Either that or she was losing her mind. No matter what Selena did when she was home, she felt tingles between her shoulder blades. She could actually feel someone or something's gaze boring into her. It wasn't just that she was alone either. It happened when Kate was around, during the evenings and the weekends too. After just a week of unrelenting sensation of being observed constantly, Selena, lying awake during the night, decided to courtesy search as she had done through the house. Looking into every room and closet, even the, through the, enough, Selena's dad wedding day advice burbled and up and nudged her. Trust your instincts. Instincts told her that she needed to look in every nook and cranny of her house. When Kate left for work the next day, Selena made sure the house was locked up tight. Nothing could, no one could ever enter when she searched. When she went through every tiny space of the house, she opened every cabinet in the drawer. She looked under every piece of furniture. She looked behind anything and everything that had more than an inch of space behind it. In the middle of his search, though, in her bedroom, Selena stopped and sat down on the floor. She dropped her head to in her hands. Who was she kidding? She wasn't going to be watched electronically. Not only was that totally unrealistic, but it was fit of facts. Selena got off the floor. She went down to her office and closed the door behind her. She pulled the shade. She sat at her desk and opened her laptop. She brought up a new document. At the top of it, she typed facts. When she typed the facts, she knew them. Lally was a robot that really existed. Lally went missing from Freddy's Pizzaplex. Kate saw Lally after it, not he, Selena refused to refer to Lally as he, went missing. Missing. Cade thought he trapped Lally in the trunk. Cade kept the trunk with him, locked up from the point on. Selena unlocked the trunk. When Cade opened the trunk, it was empty. Selena saw Lally in the garage. Selena had taken a symbolic logic class in college. It had been an elective chosen as a lark. But what she learned from it came in handy now. She ran her facts through the logic equation and came up with two possible conclusions. Neither of them, neither of them made her happy. One logical conclusion based on the facts was that Lally was real, and although not easily proven, the corollary to this conclusion was that Lally was watching Selena. This conclusion, however, was also was so insane, logical or not, that it led to another possible conclusion. Selena was losing her mind. Figuring they would help her in the business world, Selena had also taken several psychology courses in college. One, in one of the courses, they studied paranoia. Paranoid people, suffering from delusions, were always convinced that their conclusions were logical. The problem, however, was that their conclusions were based on logical fallacies. Selena went back over to her list of facts. When she really were sure they were facts, or was she just dropped straight out logic to cover up the real fact that she was becoming paranoid and delusional? Selena deleted the document and closed her laptop. Her hands were shaking. Couldn't, she couldn't say it in this house another second. Selena left her office, ignoring the immediate awareness of being observed when she walked into the kitchen. She grabbed her purse and went up out the, to the pickup. When she backed out of the garage, she realized where she needed to go. Hello, dear, Janice said when she opened her door and saw Selena standing at the front porch. I'm sorry I didn't call first, but... Janice waved away Selena's words. What did I tell you about calling and knocking on the door? My home is your home. You can come and go as you please. Janice was giving Selena a key to her house the day Selena and Kate married. And she indeed told Selena to treat Janice's house as her own. Selena, however, hadn't been able to bring herself to do that. Besides, she was afraid if she did so, Janice would assume the open door policy was re re reciprocal. Selena loved Janice, and but she didn't want her mother-in-law dropping unannounced. Janice, who was wearing a ruffled pastel pink apron and over yellow polyester pants and yellow and green floral pattern blouse, led Selena through the living room into her large, old-fashioned kitchen. Janice's leather lats tapped on the yellow and blue lin linoleum floor. When the kitchen Selena inhaled deeply, the room smelled like butter and cinnamon and sugar. The scent was enticing. It almost made her forget that why she was there. Janice suggested the bark baking ingredients and pan scattered across her yellow formica countertops. I was just whipping up a batch of raised cinnamon rolls for the ladies club, Janice said. Would you like to help? I'd love to, Selena said honestly. Maybe making cinnamon rolls was better than having the conversation she wanted to have. Baking usually relaxed Selena. She hoped it would do so today. Selena went into a pantry and plucked a simple blue apron. No ruffles. 
from the back of the pantry door. Grandma's had given the apron to Selena to use when they cooked together. Frills just don't suit you, dear. You're far too beautiful to hide those elegant curves under flounces. For the next hour, Selena and Jan spread out dough, sprinkled with butter, cinnamon, and sugar. Then they rolled into a dough, cut into classic cinnamon roll pinwheels. After the rolls were in the oven, Janice put water on the tea. Your usual peach spice, dear? Do you have any cinnamon? Uh, chamoli? Selena asked. Oh, my, Janice said. Do you need a de-stressor? You could say that. Janice didn't ask why Selena needed a de-stressor. Selena liked it just as Janice. She never pried. Janice made the tea. And she and Selena ha sat at Janice's round t kitchen table. Selena toyed with the pale blue and yellow plaid placement and let Janice chatter about her bridge club for a few minutes. Then Selena decided the conversation she came that he couldn't be put off any longer. Speaking of games, Selena said, and she knew it was a pathetic swag. What was that Cade liked so much about Lottie's game? Janice didn't seem to mind the abrupt subject change. Why, you know, I'm not sure. She took a sip of tea. It's funny you ask. It's something I did wonder about at the time. At first, I thought it was the colors in the arena. Uh, he has never liked any my softer color palette. So he even thought about the rich burgundies, dark greens, and deep blues that Cade liked to wear in the sub obsquidious khakis. She nodded. But I decided that wasn't right. I think what it was, Janice leaned back in her chair. The game made him feel special because the game was just for two and Lally was a robot. I think Cade felt like he was a chosen child or something. Now heaven only knows why he needed that feeling as an only child. He got nothing but tons of attention from me and his dad until his dad passed, of course. Rest his soul. She shook her head. But maybe it was part of it. He was an only child. Maybe she wanted a brother. Maybe Lily was like a brother to him. I'm not really sure. I do know that Kay didn't want to share Lily with anyone. What do you mean, Selena asked. Oh, I'm just remembering how upset Cade got one day when the, another little boy, a boy he knew from school named Daniel, snuck into the game. Oh, oh my, my, oh my, was Kate angry. He was furious. His little face was all screwed up and red when he got home that day. His game only for two, he said to me over and over. You would have thought that Daniel had got, done something unforgivably outrageous instead of just relatively binge in action of sneaking into Lottie's game with Cade. Janice sighed. Daniel was a sweet little boy, adorable freckles across his nose. I knew his mother. It was so tragic that he died in a horrible accident. Selena sat down in the teacup, fast it rattled in a saucer. Janice didn't notice. What accident? Selena asked. Janice got up and walked over to the oven. She turned on the oven light and bent over to look at the glass window of the oven door. Oh, they're rising nicely. You're really getting the hang of kneading, dear. An accident? Selena tried to get Janice back on track. Janice acted like she didn't hear the question. Maybe she didn't. Selena had noticed that Janice tended to drift in and out of conversations at will. As if something had better things to think about than uh, whatever has been talked about. Selena tried a different question. Why did Kate like Lily so much? I think Lily is kind of scary looking, Janice replied. S Selena raised her eyebrow. Yeah, I tend to agree, Janice said. But then little boys are odd creatures. Kate also liked snails, slugs when he was small. He was always poking at them with sticks. Not to hurt them, mind you. He just wanted to see what they'd do. He thought they were fascinating. Selena smiled at the image of Cade poking the slug, with, and her mind replaced the image of Cade and the slug with one of Lally. Selena shivered. How did Lally work, exactly? Selena asked. Was it programmed to run and hide or sneak up on the kids or what? Selena wanted to understand how the robot could be doing in the, in the house. She was nearly 100% sure now that Lally was her stalker. Oh no, nothing like that, dear Janice said. Lally didn't move. The kids had to carry him around and hide him themselves. Seemed somewhat silly to me, of course. If you hid the thing, you know where it was, but it was all a grand game of pretend, I guess. Selena blinked at Janice. She opened her mouth to ask another question, but no words came out. What else was there to ask? Selena knew what she needed to know. Wiping her suddenly moist eyes in the trembling hand, Selena stood. I have to get home and get some work done, she lied. If Janice thought it odd that Selena practically ran out of the house and leaped into the pickup, Janice kept her reaction hidden. She smiled and waved as Selena drove away. Selena managed a twitchy wave in return. She couldn't summon up a smile. Her hands gripping the steering wheel so tightly that they started to ache. Selena burned rubber as accelerated away from Janice's home. She ignored the posted speed limit. Although her eyes were on the road, she wasn't really seeing her gaze flicked over a coming SUV. A very familiar SUV. It was Cade. Selena looked straight ahead as she passed her husband. Had he seen her? Cade often got tunnel vision when he drove. Maybe he didn't notice the pickup. A bright red pickup. Selena glanced in a rear view as the SUV turned off, headed toward Janice's house. 
So what if Kay did see her? Maybe Selena was overreacting. Maybe she only thought she knew what was going on. And again, maybe she was keeping a logical conclusion that weren't logical at all. A ripple of something that felt like static electricity skittered down Selena's spine. It was groundless anxiety, or was it thoroughly justified fear? Selena didn't know. All she knew was she wanted to get away. Should she be fleeing from Lally, or from Cade, or could she fleeing from herself? It didn't matter. She was fleeing. Back in the farmhouse, Selena ran down the hall to the agate door. Hesitating for only a couple of seconds, she flung open the door and trotted up the steps. At the top of the stairs, she quickly pulled the string and turned on the bare bulb. She looked around. The attic looked the same as it had the last several times she had checked it. Rushing across the open space, Selena grabbed two suitcases, the two largest, pulled them across the attic. The rubber reels made scuffling noises against the buckled floorboards. Selena shoved the suitcases out of the attic onto the landing of the top stop of the stairs, and she dragged the cases down the stairs. Skrr, thump, skrr, thump, skrr, thump of their progress down the stairs made her cringe. At the bottom of the stairs, Selena shoved the suitcases into the hall. She turned and closed the door behind her. She pulled the suitcases down the hall into the bedroom. Selena didn't, hadn't allowed herself to sense anything since she left Janice's house. She didn't think she could function if she let herself feel. When Selena left the suitcase on the bed, though, her emotions began. She acknowledged them. She started crying. Stop it, Selena. She, she asked out herself when she wiped her tears. She needed to focus. Selena rushed to her bare room and began pulling out her clothes. She tried to think clearly enough to grab only what she really needed. Other than packing and getting out of the house, there's no clear pan in mind. How could she? She wasn't reasoning. She was reacting. Selena finished her bureau and started toward the closet. She was reaching the door handle when she heard a thud downstairs. She froze. Holding her breath, Selena listened. When she started breathing in, it was a thud followed by a rustling sound. It wasn't far away. Selena turned and stared at the open bedroom door. Why didn't she close it? Heading her packing job, Selena crossed into the open doorway. She looked down the hallway. It was empty. A single tap from the stairs leading down to the first floor. Selena glanced to the bedroom. Should she ignore the signs and keep packing? No. No way. If she wasn't here alone, she wanted to know about it. Selena tiptoed toward the stairs. She craned her neck to examine the whole flight. It was empty. Selena looked around. Okay, she'd do this systematically. Starting in the empty bedroom, Selena began her search. She first opened the closet and checked the trunk. It was empty, of course. Selena moves on the bedroom. They intend to turn into the spare room. Now it had a bed. But the bed wasn't made up. They had added any furniture. Selena got down to her knees and looked under the bed. Nothing. She stood and went to the closet. Selena had put the lesser used part of her wardrobe in the closet. She had too many clothes. She knew that. But she loved clothes. She put most of her vintage finds in this closet. Throwing open the closet door, she pushed back on the long dress of the skirts. Nothing was behind them. The only thing down on the floor was a closet with a couple dozen pairs of Selena shoes. The ones that didn't fit in the master bedroom closet. On the shelf above the clothes, the hat boxes containing the hats she rarely wore were tacked most to the ceiling. Selena left the guest room. She opened the linen closet. It, too, held only what she was supposed to hold. Stacks of towels and sheets and bales of toilet paper and paper towels filled the closet shelves. Selena closed the closet door. Selena already knew nothing was in her bedroom. She had just been there. She also just checked the attic. She was ne had to go downstairs. Selena walked slowly to the top of the staircase. She listened. Two clicks and a rattle came from the direction of the kitchen. Selena steeled herself, stepped lightly as she could go onto the first step. Doing her best to avoid the creaky spots on the stairs, Selena crept down the living room. There she paused. A faint scratching sound came from behind the dining room. She headed that way. They had yet to fill the hunch that had come with the cherry lining room set. Those upper displayed cabinets were empty. Selena hurried over the hutch open opened the bottom cabinets. They were empty, too. The dining room was separated in the kitchen by pocket doors. They were tucked away and the doorway was open. Selena stepped through it and surveyed the kitchen. It was deserted. She crossed the pantry. She opened the door and looked at all the shelves of canned and boxed foods and baking supplies in the small kitchen appliances. She felt her tears trying to return. She had so much fun organizing the pantry but she, that had been before. The rest came from the living room. It sounded like something had been dragged. Selena grabbed the rolling pin in the nearest pantry shelf. She ran into the living room. The rolling pin cocked over her shoulder. The living room was empty. Selena lowered the rolling pin. Now what? She searched the whole house. She looked up the stairs, thinking about her abandoned packing job. Was she overreacting? Selena walked over to the sofa and sat down. She laid a rolling pin to the next seat next to her. She leaned against the soft sofa and packed up the tub of cream striped throw pillow. She hugged the pillow. Was she being paranoid? Or was she about to blow up her marriage? Her very new marriage for no good reason. Again, read too many pages. That was on me. 
142. And next time, I think we're going to just read to the end of the chapter, which is 152. Only 10 pages, but hey, what can you do? So, as such, blah, blah, blah. It's just one simple little blip to a nice little choop, choop, blip, blip. So, yeah. Um, wow, we read 20 pages in 25 minutes. That's actually, actually a new record, or a newer record to me, because beforehand, like it says on my board, it took 30 minutes last time, so today I was reading pretty quick. So, good job, me. Um, I hope to read every day, to be honest. That would be so nice. Um, it, it would definitely get rid of books in my bookcase. Oh, I miss those times of reading Five Nights at Freddy's Fetch. One day I might reread those. One day. Anyways, I hope you guys have a super fantastic, wonderful day. Be polite, be efficient. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh...